hello, my name's Jeffrey, and um, I'm a singer-songwriter pianist. I, uh, I write my own songs, I perform them, and I tour them for my living, and that's what I've done for the past five or six years. And um, for those of you who, who may have heard my music before, you, you might know, or, or, or I'll tell you a little bit about this, some of my songs are kind of story-oriented, and um, some of those stories involve characters that I've met in my life, and I, I turn them into a song. And it's, it's one of those characters in one of my songs that I'm gonna tell you about today, and her name is Mrs. Bell. Now, I grew up in a small, rural farming town in Saskatchewan, Canada, and it's called Punishai. And let me paint a picture of my little town for you. It has about 250 people, and that group is made up of sort of two subsets. There's the First Nations, or Aboriginal people, on the one hand, and then we have the white or Caucasian group, and that's pretty much the mix of our community. But in that, when I was growing up, there was one East Indian family, and they were the Bells. And Mr. Bell was my, my science teacher in school, and he was this charismatic, outgoing man. Everyone loved him to bits. And he was a wonderful educator, and he was well accepted in the community. Um, but Mrs. Bell, his wife, on the other hand, by contrast, was pretty introverted. She kept to herself. She didn't really go out of her way to initiate conversations with people. And importantly to this story, she was really traditional in the way she dressed. So she wore a sari up and down, walk, walking up and down the streets of our little town of 250 people. She had a bindi, which is the mark on her forehead. And uh, as you can imagine, she stuck out like a sore thumb. And as a result of being so visibly different in our tiny community, no one spoke to her. And every memory I have of Mrs. Bell in our tiny town is that she was walking in, in our streets and she was always alone. And when I think back to my time in the town, I never really personally took the time either to sit down with her, take her out for coffee, ask her about her life in, in India or in Canada. And I don't really know anybody else who did. And I can't imagine how much life experience and interesting ideas were tucked up there inside her head that were there for the taking, but because she sat just outside the comfort zone of most people, that a lot of that stuff up there just simply went unshared. And it's it's kind of a shame. And on this topic of, of, of ideas, the, the ones that might have been up there in her head, when I think of us here at this conference, um, we're all going to come up with ideas in our lives. But for the most part, for us, our ideas are going to be borrowed to a certain degree. There's something about what we come up with. It's, we're going to take snippets from here and there, and our thoughts are going to be kind of borrowed. There's very few of us who are going to create something completely and utterly brand new from scratch in our lifetimes, and that's perfectly okay. You're all thinking, well, I am, I know I am, but, but, but you might not, and that's okay. But th there's, 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 people, there's people around us who are gonna say and do things, the people we surround ourselves with, they're gonna say and do things that are gonna trigger things within us. They're gonna, they might trigger inspiration within us, and if we're really, really lucky, they might trigger innovation. And so, these are the people who we typically surround ourselves with. These are our friends, this is our family, it's our, it's our neighbors, it might be people in our, in our music community or our church, wherever. And as we get together with them, and we, we share thoughts and brainstorm, uh, bang our heads together a little bit, um, there'll be new things that'll come from that, right? But imagine the possibility that could be created if we just stepped outside our comfort zone a little bit, and started to gravitate to people who are more unlike us, and then shared ideas with them, and brainstormed with them, and bonked heads a little bit, the possibility in that possibility is pretty immense. And when I think of my current community um, in the city that I live in, I often kind of wonder what ideas and experiences that I might be missing out on by being a normal human being and gravitating to the people who are kind of like me and people that I kind of like. And that's a very normal human being thing to do. And the reason is because it's kind of easy. It's easy to be around things that are like us, right? 
But if we're really open to this notion of possibility, we know that, it, that it's, it's everywhere, it's all around us. And the Mrs. Bells of the world and the differences that she represents and the unknowns out there that she represents and the possibility, to, to experience that, we have to get, side, get outside of our comfort zone, get outside of those little bubbles we've created, and get outside of the boundaries that we've made. And uh, to do that, it takes effort, it takes energy, and it takes, it takes follow through. You have to be committed to that sort of thing. But if you do it, if we do it, the, res the results and the rewards can be pretty intense. And I have a, a couple recent examples in my life where I have experienced this, um, and both resulted in kind of a, a gold mine of, of new ideas for myself. One was a recent concert tour I did to Ghana in Africa, and another was uh, much closer to home. I was invited to do uh, into a school with inner city kids to work with them using songwriting as a tool for creation and self-expression. And in both instances, when I got invited to do both of those things, I had reservations about it, and I could feel it in me. I was kind of scared, and I had a bit of trepidation, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, when I got the tour invite to go perform and do a tour in Ghana and Africa, I actually had the thought that was, you know, I could spend that same two or three weeks here in Canada touring to venues, clubs, theaters, halls, etc., that I kind of knew, where I kind of knew what the audience would be like, where I kind of knew what the response would be like, where I had a certain degree of control in the situation. Why would I go halfway around the world and spend my time when I didn't really know what the result would be? And when I got the call from the teacher and the principal um, in this city to go to the, the school and work with the kids and using songwriting as, as a tool to help them with self-expression, I thought, you know, I'm not a teacher. I don't think I know how to do this. Um, and more importantly, I don't, I don't define myself as that, and that's not how I identify myself. I'm not an educator. I, I think of me as a songwriter who, who tours and performs. But in both cases, I kind of thought of this Mrs. Bell. And, and I thought, the simple reason that I'm kind of scared to do both of these things is, is a great reason to do it and go and explore the difference that might be there and the opportunity that might be there, which is exactly what I didn't do with Mrs. Bell back in my, my hometown. So our dear Mrs. Bell died about 10 years ago. And when she did, she was, very, she was a very sad lady, and she took with her uh, a life's worth of incredible experiences and ideas. And at the time when she passed away, I got thinking about her, and um, my thoughts burbled to the surface in the form of a song that I called The Wonderful Mrs. Bell. And I perform it when I tour around Canada, and um, it's kind of a tribute to her. So I thought I would perform it for you here today. So without further ado, I'll sing for you and play for you the wonderful Mrs. Bell. When the tree by the big house on Main Street got a new swing rope and a tire She was one of the first ones to see it She walked that way all the time Mrs. Bell was just a bit different It might have been her color, her clothes But in a cast of under 300, it showed. There were so many things that she never said. Left them all up there, swimming round in her head. And there were so many times that we would meet. Trading silent smiles and passing in the street. I think that small town was hell. 
Oh, the tales her thoughts could tell Yeah, the wonderful, the beautiful Mrs. Bell Ran things like church teas and bingos Her life in a dimly lit room A bird in a cage oh, inside looking out Really has only one view You could see those dreams dancing in her dark brown eyes Hear her heart as it beat the tune Walking in the streets, oh, and watching her old soul Turn a deeper shade of blue There were so many things that she never said Left them all up there, swimming round in her head and there were so many times that we would meet Trading silent smiles, passing in the street I think that small town was hell Oh, the tales her thoughts could tell Yeah, the wonderful, the beautiful Mrs. Bell She stood on a hill At the edge of town She threw back her head And laughed She smiled as she gazed At its smallness she laughed last There were so many things that she never said Left them all up there swimming round in her head And there were so many times that we would meet Trading silent smiles, passing in the street I think that small town was hell Oh, the tales her thoughts could tell Yeah, the wonderful, the beautiful Mrs. Bell